Trek North students. Do you want to make a few thousand dollars? Here's what you've got to do. You're about to look through Trek North's course catalog and hear our teachers talk about the offerings for next year. Some of them are going to be talking about AP classes. What an AP class is, is it's a course that's developed by college professors and high school teachers to challenge high school kids at a level that's similar to what they would see the first or second year of college. Now at the end of these courses, you have the opportunity to take an exam and if it goes well, you can oftentimes get college credit uh, just by taking these courses in high school. Now, if you have college credit, that means you don't have to spend money on it when you are leaving Trek North wherever you end up going. So that can easily be thousands, even tens of thousands of dollars. AP is a program that's very essential to our Trek North school. Our teachers spend a great deal of time um, going to trainings uh, to be able to offer up to 14 different courses on a rotating basis. That's more than most schools our size, and that's more than Bemidji High School. So it's really important to our school that we're able to offer some of these courses. But it should also be important to you guys. Uh, this is an opportunity for you to engage in areas that you're interested in. Whether you're a math and science kid, or you love social science, or you want to do art or literature, uh, these are courses that help you engage in your interest areas at a level that is going to be uh, engaging for you. So it also offers a lot of opportunities for your future. It looks great on a college transcript. College admissions rep loves seeing advanced placement courses. Even if the grades aren't that great, it shows that you engaged at a level that was, um, that was a little extra. So if those aren't motivating things for you, you know, consider it paying your future self a few thousand dollars. To graduate from Trek North, you need five credits in English. Your first two credits will be taken care of in Foundations of Literature and Composition in ninth grade. Then you must choose from the categories American Literature or Indigenous Literature, Multicultural Literature or World Literature, Creative Writing or College Writing, and also you have the offerings of AP Literature and Composition, AP Language and Composition, and AP Seminar. Foundations of Lit, or FOL, is all about reading. We read exciting stories about killers and dictators, and we also read stories about love and relationships, the most famous being Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. In composition, we focus on writing. We write arguments. How do you make your voice heard or your opinion heard? We also write about uh, other people's writing. We write about what makes a story a good story. In American literature, we read a few things as a whole class from authors like John Steinbeck or Arthur Miller. We try and see the impacts of important poets throughout the uh, American history. Uh, and there's also quite a bit of personal choice so kids can explore parts of American literature and culture that they're interested in and be able to share that back with class. In Indigenous literature, we'll be focusing on authors of Indigenous descent in the North American, South American region. We'll look at how Indigenous people are represented in literature. We'll be analyzing the themes and also making connections to our own lives. We're going to have two class novels that we read, They're There by Tommy Orange, fantastic, and also Firekeeper's Daughter, uh, Thick Page Turner. We'll also be doing book clubs and independent reading, all focusing around authors of Indigenous descent. Multicultural literature is a lot like world literature, except the main distinction is that all of the authors that we focus on um, show the diversity of Americans. Um, so we read a lot of Native American literature, like Black Elk Speaks or Zikawe Shaw. Um, we also read um, some African American literature um, by different African American authors, and we read stories from people um, around the world in places like Asia and the Middle East who have immigrated to America. The most famous one uh, that I can think of being The Kite Runner by Khaled Hosseini. Uh, so, multicultural literature, it's all about reading different American perspectives literature we take a look at storytelling and mythology from all over the world we also read a Greek play or two uh, we take a look at the outsized role that Shakespeare has had in all world cultures uh, we try and finish up with a few different perspectives uh, from world perspectives that we may not have uh, had a chance to study in other places in high school you're looking for a class to take you need an English credit this could be the class for you to learn to write and edit Learn what makes music flow and analyze each lyric. We'll even write some funny things and maybe something satiric. Learn what makes a poem a poem and write a fiction story. Mixing art and language is this class's territory. If you like the sound of journaling and writing a haiku, write your name on the list. 
this is the class for you. Writing is a lot like being an athlete. You got to practice at it every single day. And in college writing, it may sound like we write a bunch of essays, but most of it is about flexing our writing muscles on a daily basis by reading other people's um, essays and doing a lot of informal writing to strengthen those fundamental muscles so that when we get a big essay, we're ready to go. In AP Literature, we do a lot of reading and writing. We start with some classics like Frankenstein and The Awakening. We then go to more modern books like Homegoing and Kite Runner. All the novels that we read in class are great pieces of literature that will lead to passionate discussions in class, which will then develop into strong pieces of writing. We'll work on our, our essay skills, which will then help us prepare for our test in the spring, but also just make us better analytical thinkers about life in general. How would you define creativity? And can we teach it? What makes the Gettysburg Address an effective speech? How do we define ownership? And most importantly, how do we use our words to get what we want? AP Language and Composition is really about the philosophy of how we use words, and it gives us a lot of practice using words to make our own arguments. What the heck is AP Seminar anyway? Well, it's part of AP Capstone program where kids get to ask their own questions about the world that they're interested in, do some of their own reading to understand complex problems about the world, evaluate multiple perspectives, synthesizing them, and then ultimately work together in teams to make presentations and papers that explore these difficult problems that they are interested in. Uh, and we think about the ways that we can do that in a way that's, that gets us ready for college. To graduate from Trek North, you also need five credits in math. You will complete Integrated Math 1 your freshman year, Integrated Math 2 your sophomore year, and then you'll have one more class to take. You can choose from Integrated Math 3, Statistics, Advanced Placement Statistics, or Advanced Placement Calculus. Are you, if you're looking to uh, take the ACT and do well on that for your college scholarships, if you're thinking of going to college with a pre-professional major like nursing, PT, OT, or if you're thinking of a business major, if you kind of liked algebra and you're, or you're thinking of taking AP Calc the following year, I would suggest taking IMATH 3. Uh, it's a great prep course for all of those things and will further your knowledge in algebra. Again, this is a one semester class. If on the other hand, math really wasn't your thing in ninth and 10th grade, or you're not sure what you're gonna do after high school, but it's probably not gonna be in the sciences or the pre-professional fields, um, or if you're just wondering what's math good for, then I'm going to suggest you take stats. Stats is a class that shows how we use math in everyday settings to figure out how likely something is to happen so that we can uh, know what to do. It helps us make decisions. It's a great course, uh, a lot of communication, not a lot of math. If, on the other hand, you're looking for AP classes, and again, these are a full year long, your two choices are AP Stats and AP Calc. For AP Stats, you're going to want to be a critical reader and a good communicator or want to get those skills. We teach those skills in AP Stats. Um, if you're looking to take an AP Math class, but you're worried about the math part, again, AP Stats is a great class. We do very little uh, what you guys would call math from ninth and 10th grade math. We basically add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Uh, we solve for X once. And that's about it. So it's really an application course, not a more algebra course. Okay, and then your final option would be AP Calculus. So if you liked doing Algebra Trig in ninth and 10th grade and you're looking for a challenge, or if you want to figure out the answers to some of the big questions in math, uh, this is a great course for you. We're gonna answer those questions. We're gonna do a lot of Algebra and Trig, okay? Um, if you're also looking to go into pre-med, or into engineering. This is a class you can take for college credit also. And we can get you those credits in the nice small Trek North community instead of a huge lecture hall with 400 people in it. So again, that would be AP Calc, great option for you here. To graduate, you also need four credits in science. You need to take integrated science your freshman year, biology, chemistry or physics, environmental science, and then you also have the options of STEM application, AP biology, or AP environmental science. Have you ever wondered, why does salt make ice melt? 
Why does it take longer to cook pasta noodles in Denver, Colorado? What kinds of chemical reactions are there? Why is the periodic table of elements arranged the way it is? If you take chemistry, you'll explore the answers to all these questions and more, and discover all of the chemistry going on around you every day. Biology is a required class. In this class, you'll be learning about the study of life. So you'll be learning about ecology and genetics and evolution. You'll learn about cells and human body systems. And in this class, you'll be exposed to hands-on learning opportunities. You'll do labs like extracting DNA and activities like competing for M&Ms. And biology is a really neat science because your eyes will be open to the natural world around you. Environmental science meets the requirement for the high school earth and space standards. It also introduces topics in environmental science, such as ecology, how humans interact with the environment, natural resources, and sustainability. This class can be taken on its own or in preparation to take AP environmental science. Have you ever wondered what exactly is the internet? How does it work? Have you ever thought, man, I wish there was an app for that? Guess what? You could be the one who makes that app. In STEM class, we learn about the engineering design process to come up with solutions to challenges. We explore computer-aided design software and 3D printing, and we introduce the fundamentals of computer science and coding to make our own apps that you can share with family and friends. Check out STEM class to learn more about the technology that you use every day. If I launch a 5 kilogram pumpkin from a catapult at a 30 degree angle at 20 meters per second, how far will it go? If you take physics, you'll be able to figure out the answer to that question, along with learning a lot more about motion, sound, light, and even some modern topics like quantum mechanics and special relativity. Check out physics to learn more about how the world around you works is an elective class that I would encourage somebody to take if they really like science class or if they really enjoyed biology. I'd also encourage somebody to take this class if they're looking for an opportunity to take a class that's going to expose them to what it's like to be in college. And in this class, we will be learning about the complexities of biology. We'll be doing labs. We will be um, doing hands-on activities. We'll be writing FRQs. We'll be really digging into data. And in this class, not only will you be learning the content of biology on a deeper level, Level, but you will also be improving your critical thinking skills. AP Environmental Science is a two-semester class that helps students see the relationships between things in the natural world. We cover a wide range of topics including biodiversity, populations, human and otherwise, land and water use, energy sources, pollution, and climate change. We spend time doing labs and take occasional field trips to help reinforce what we're covering in class. To graduate, you need five credits in social sciences. You need civics and economics, human geography, history one, or ethnic studies, history two, world history. You also have the options of AP human geography and AP US history. Civics and economics is a semester long required course. This class helps students acquire the skills and knowledge necessary to become responsible and effective citizens and also consumers. In this class, students study the founding documents of the United States government and also have an introduction to personal finance and consumer economics. Human geography is a semester long class where you're going to learn about culture, religion, population, migration, all of these different aspects, how humans have occupied the Earth's surface, why they're there, and how they got there. World history. In world history, we would be, uh, begin our study with the year 1750. Um, we'll carry through to the year 1914. Um, we will be focusing on uh, history itself as a discipline rather than any uh, uh, events per se. Um, what are the tools and skills that a historian uses to understand the past? And hopefully by the end of the class, uh, students will be able to uh, have a better understanding of the modern world and how it is that history, historians understand it. U.S. History 1 is a required class in the Social Studies Department. This class covers the first half of American history from pre-contact to up until the U.S. Civil War in the 1860s. So this class covers the interactions between indigenous nations and colonizing nations, and then also takes us through early American history. History 2 will begin with the uh, end of World War II and will carry through to the year uh, 2003 with the War on Terror. And the events we'll be covering between there will be uh, life in the 1950s, will be uh, 
doing uh, the civil rights movement, the war on Vietnam, the uh, conservative revolution of the 1980s. And we will also uh, get to the point where we talk a little bit about um, the shaping of modern U.S. Uh, history. Ethnic Studies is a class that focuses on the experiences of Indigenous Americans, Hispanic Americans, um, Asian Americans, and African Americans. It also includes a unit on identity, where students will consider concepts related to their own personal, group, ethnic, and or national identity. This class also meets the U.S. History II requirement. AP Human Geography is a year-long college-level class. You guys get a lot of freedom in this class because I treat you like college students. We get to learn about population, migration, wars, culture, environment, pollution, all these different aspects about human activities on the earth. It's a really fun class. It's challenging, but I think a lot of you guys would really, really like it, and I hope that you sign up. AP, U.S. Government and Politics, is a year-long class in the Social Studies Department. It meets the civics and economics requirement, and it also gives students an opportunity to get college credit if they successfully pass the AP exam in May. Um, this class prepares students to have meaningful discussions and debates concerning politics and government in America, and it's a college-level course, so be prepared for a challenge. Hola, hola, hola. I'm Catherine, the Spanish teacher at Trek North, talking to you about the world language requirement. So sometime between ninth and 12th grade, you need to take a year of Spanish. What do we do in Spanish one and two? Well, we listen to music, we write stories together, discuss our lives, watch short films, talk about current events, play games, um, and we definitely dig into the cultures that speak Spanish. After taking Spanish 1-2, you can go on to take 3-4 and even AP Spanish. We're really big on learning how to communicate in the language, focusing on listening, reading, and then diving into the speaking. So sign up to take Spanish, and I'll see you in class. To graduate, you need to take two credits in arts or music. There's drawing, which covers the mediums unique to drawing and the techniques that as well. For painting, we cover the techniques and the materials you need to painting. So acrylic, tempera, watercolor. For sculpture, we do both ceramics, so working with clay and working with different sculptural mediums such as plaster, wood, and cardboard. In mixed media, we combine those things from the previous classes together to create works of art um, using more than one material. So for instance, like um, collage or an altered book or um, printmaking with drawing on top of it. For AP art, there are three portfolios that you can choose from. So there's a drawing portfolio, a 2D portfolio, and a 3D portfolio. So you focus on um, working with mediums that are unique to each portfolio. You pick a, something to investigate and you carry that through in all your pieces. With AP, you also get college credit if you take and pass the exam. So you could have three art classes um, done with in college credit if you chose to take the three different portfolios while you are a high school student. Piano. This class is for any level of music experience. Whether the student is a beginner or advanced piano player, the focus of piano at Trek North is to help students grow as musicians. Varsity Choir. This is an auditioned choir and the audition is with me. Students spend their time together learning music in small and large ensembles. There are three vocal contests along with concerts for the community. Music theory and composition. Students will gain a better understanding of music and how it works. By the end of this course, students will be able to analyze chords, scales, and other components of written music. Each student in this class will create their own original musical composition. Having a semester of piano class is strongly encouraged.
To graduate, you need seven elective classes. This can be achieved by taking extra classes in any of the departments we already seen or from choosing from any of the following classes. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Come on, we all have questions about outer space. How big is it? What's out there? How do we see what's out there? Who's out there? If you take astronomy, you'll learn about the basics of telescopes, how celestial objects are formed, things like planets, stars, and yes, even black holes. We'll talk about the speed of light, Einstein's theories of relativity, the history of the universe, and its possible futures. To top it off, we'll discuss the questions that today's astronomers are pondering right now. This physics elective will focus more on the concepts and less on math compared to the regular physics class. And you don't need to take the regular physics class before you take this one. However, this is an elective, so it does not fulfill the requirements that you take either physics or chemistry. So in wellness strategies, we will talk about some of the topics that are important in the lives of high school students, such as mental health, drug and alcohol use, contagious diseases, addiction, relationships, and the teenage brain. We also learn the practice of centering or mindfulness, which can be helpful in many areas of your life. American Indian Language and Culture Studies. In this class, students will learn of American Indian oral stories, lessons and games about land, art, histories and languages in a multidisciplinary curriculum that deepen the learning of core subjects. We will primarily be focused on the Ojibwe language and culture, but we'll discuss other tribes as well. This course will allow for students to learn more local histories. We will be working with the seasons for hands-on learning of the Ojibwe winter games and either harvesting wild rice or maple sap and or harvesting birch bark. At Trek North, we offer a variety of trips throughout the year. Students can choose between outdoor learning trips and service learning trips. On the Black Hills trip, you might wake up on a foggy morning, roll out of your tent, and you're like, oh, I gotta make some oatmeal and coffee so I'm ready for my adventure. So you are gonna go to Black Elk Peak. You're gonna see Crazy Horse. You're gonna see lots of wildlife. And you'll be doing lots of hiking on this car camping trip and hanging out with your friends and getting out of your comfort zone. But this trip is more than hiking and sightseeing. We'll be on sacred ancestral lands and seeing firsthand how it's been exploited and capitalized on. So it's important that we acknowledge that truth and learn about the history and importance of the Black Hills, the heart of everything that is. North goes on two hiking trips each year, one in the fall and one in the spring. These trips are usually three or four nights, depending on the weather. On these trips, you cook your own food, you make your own camp, and you carry your, all of your own gear. We go to various locations around the state, over by Duluth, going up towards Grand Marais on the Superior Hiking Trail, going to see the beautiful fall colors, or going to see the new signs of green in the springtime. Getting ready for a climbing trip to the North Shore. We've got our stuff to build anchors with some equipment. We've got plenty of carabiners to go around. We've got belay devices so we can all learn that skill and practice it. Lots of climbing rope. We've got our shoes. We've got harnesses. We've got helmets. This fall we're heading to the North Shore. We're going to go climbing and we're going to teach a lot of people how to use some of these skills but we're also going to have some time team building and going hiking and just having a good time learning how this stuff works. Trek North also goes on the Vermilion Sudan mine trip. This is two to three nights depending on the weather and the season. It goes out in the fall. On this trip you go and stay in their brand new cabins over at the state park. You get to explore the state park and its various scenery. Uh, you go in the fall, so maybe you'll get snow, maybe it will be beautiful leaves, depending on. You also go on a hike to go see the waterfalls near Ely, and you go on a tour of the Sudan mine as well. Did someone say winter camping? That's right. Trek North offers a winter camping trip. On this trip, if you like skiing, snowshoeing, being outside in the winter, this is the trip for you. We spend five to seven days out and about, couple days in a cozy cabin, weather permitting, we get to camp outside in Quincy's tents, anything you can think of, sometimes just even under the stars. The Chicago Social Justice Immersion Trip takes students into the heart of Chicago and its many diverse neighborhoods. We learn and work alongside agencies that tackle social justice issues here. 
Students are given opportunities to immerse themselves in issues like homelessness, food insecurity, immigration, incarceration, and equal rights. We live in community during this six-day trip, which means we cook, clean, and take care of each other. We also get the chance to go to downtown Chicago with all its attractions, the shopping, amazing views, and the food. When students return to Bemidji, we hope they are ready to see it differently and put what they have learned into action. High school students have an opportunity to participate in a service learning trip to South Texas. This trip is a week-long trip in which students will volunteer at various agencies in the Rio Grande Valley while gaining information and different perspectives about the immigration crisis on the border of Mexico. West Virginia trip, it takes uh, two days to get there. We do a lot of work looking at environmental impacts of uh, mountaintop removal, how it impacts the communities of West Virginia. We also do a lot of work um, to help out people in the communities and uh, it's a great trip. We do a lot of hiking. You get to see a lot of the country. Are you itching to go on a canoe trip? Me too. You're gonna paddle for four days and sleep three nights along the Mississippi going from the headwaters to Lake Bemidji. You're gonna learn about how to be a good canoeer, what it's like to be a successful camper, how to push yourself and test the limits. This is a really cool opportunity because all that water that comes from the headwaters, we get to use as a resource and we also affect that water. We pollute that waterway, we try to clean that waterway, we recreate on it. You're also gonna learn about a really important environmental, cultural, and economic resource that we have right here in Bemidji.